number of inches apart men can spread their legs on public transportation, all the way up to actually giving them a measuring tape to record their overt crime of manspreading, all the while ignoring the fact that men are still required to sign up to be possibly forced to participate in a war, and women aren't. In the eyes of an egalitarian, and not a feminist, which injustice do you think deserves a little bit more attention? I think I can leave that to the audience. It's also incredibly ironic that feminists are willing to charge police officers in order to disrupt a lecture on male issues, and yet also seek to regulate the way men sit down in public. They are talking about it like it's some kind of space issue, and yet completely ignore women who leave their bags on seats next to them. The reason they do this is because it isn't a space issue. It is a control issue. Modern third wave feminism is what you get when you take female adolescent pettiness and manifest it inside of full grown adults. They seek control all the way down to the way men sit on public transportation. And yet people talking about male issues while they happen to attend that campus is fascism. Speaking about male issues is fascism. The way men sit down is problematic and must be controlled. I just have to say, in my personal opinion, the fact that New York spent $76,707 of taxpayers' money on a man-spreading campaign, and the fact that there is a movement in Toronto proposing to ban man-spreading on public transit, while not even caring about the fact that there are zero battered men's shelters in Canada, is the biggest argument against a patriarchy I have ever seen. And if feminists can get New York to spend $76,707 of taxpayers' money on an advertisement telling men specifically to sit a certain way, it's tough to argue that feminism isn't the establishment. You can't be claiming that you are bucking the status quo when you are invited to speak at the UN and the room applauds you. Use taxpayer dollars to advertise against men's posture. Have members of the United States government backing a campaign to ban the word bossy. And have members of the UK government supporting the eroding of due process rights of men accused of rape. Okay, this is part one of a video for Sean. Sean Bruno Berry, born on May 13th, 1998. So uh, this, uh, this here is you, Sean. You're sitting next to me. You're the little one with the big head there. Anyway, uh, that's me abusing you because I hate you so much. Yeah, I, just, I hate you. I hope your life is crap. I mean, that's what, that's what dads do, right? They mess up your life. <laughs> Sean, I'm making this video series. I'm going to try to put out some more video. I'm really busy right now because I just got married and I'm trying to buy a house and there's a lot of stuff going on. I don't have a lot of time to be shuffling around with videos and thinking about this stuff because it's very, it's very painful memories for me. But I've only talked to you once since you were seven and you told me that you hate me and you said that I don't deserve to be called dad and you, and you were acting really mad at me. Um, I think your mom has probably told you some things that aren't true. I don't know. Could be possible. Could be possible that you lived with her since you were seven and you're 23 now. Uh, you figured it out. You're on your own, buddy. I'm here for you. And, uh, and I can tell you, the, and I'll tell you the truth. I'm your dad. I love you. I won't lie to you. Um, so I'm going to try to make this series. I haven't, um, I'm just putting this little video up front so I can just show you that, you know, Hey, you know, there was a time that I, I do, I did care about you. I'm not a monster. Uh, I, I made some mistakes, but they, they don't, they don't measure up to the, the amount of lies that your mom has told and that your grandfather told and that your aunt Tebby told horrible people, the blues. I'm telling you right now, I'm not just saying that to insult them. I'm just saying uh, when you go to court and you lie and you, you put people in jail over false accusations and then, you know, try to portray somebody and say stuff that's not true, that's that's horrible, Sean. And don't you ever do it to anybody and don't let it be done to you. So I want to give you an example of why, of how parents can, you know, love their kids, right? No one's going to love you more than me or and no one's going to love you more than your mom. That doesn't mean you do everything right. And if you happen to have some people that are behind you, then when you do something bad and they enable you or they support it, sometimes you want to do more bad things. You go, oh, this must be okay because everyone's helping me here. No one's helped me, Sean. I haven't, I've been alone this whole time. And I'm not a victim, and I don't feel sorry for myself, and I don't let people uh, give me too much sympathy. I, I mean, look, there was a time that it hurt having my son taken. 
and I love you. And if you think that doesn't hurt, or if you think it's okay to go to jail when you, uh -huh. so anyway, so here's here's the point. Sean now look boy. here, I, that's me pushing you down. Now I asked your uncle Kevin. That's your uh -huh. uncle Kevin down here. Look, look Kevin look. just lets him run into the fucking. Now, I had just asshole. talked to Kevin, and I said, no, I'm going down. I was almost going to punch your uncle Kevin. Oh, I'm I'm pissed right there. I I'm walking off, and I and then my brother knows he fucked up because I was very protective of you, Sean. And when I sent you down there, I'd already given you like several rides down there, me holding you, but you wanted to go down there by yourself. The times you went down by yourself, you fell down on your face. Then the second time I sent, sent you down there, Kevin lets you run into the bank. Is he now I was being over, look at me, I'm overprotective of you. That hasn't, that hasn't changed. And it's not a good thing all the time. Sometimes you gotta let people just fall on their face and they gotta learn, okay? Um, that's where you're at now, you're an adult. You have to figure this out, Sean. Your mom, it, I'm sure she's fine, you, but your mom did a bad thing taking me out of your life. She took the only other person in your life that will, would care for you and threw me away for nothing. Your mom, I can't, I can't even, I, I don't even like talking about her. Like I got a new life and, and I'm sorry that you, that you had to go through that. And I'm sorry for anything I did wrong, but they were mistakes. I, I didn't, they were unintentional. And the things that you think I was doing bad, Sean, I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, I was trying to protect you. I really was. And I, I don't know. How, the truth is not going to change. So anyway, I love you, son. This is my video to you. Okay. Um, I'll try to make more in a series. I'm just going to tell you about my life because I don't hear from you. So I'm going to tell you about what's going on with me. I have some all I can do. Maybe you want to know. All right. So I love you, son. I hope to talk to you before my life is dead. <laughs> before I die. I love you, son. Figure this out, okay? Hi, Sean, it's your dad. Okay, so this is uh, part one of I, well, the, it's a working title. I hate my dad, my son hates me. I hate my dad, my son hates me. <laughs> um, okay, Sean, so let me tell you about my first memory. My first memory, no, it's, it's my very first memory I, I can that I can remember. And it was with my dad. I know we were in San Francisco. And I was about three. And we were standing next to a pier or someplace like that. Or drove up to, to it. The, the ocean. And there was salty uh, waves. Kind of the, the waves were crashing on the pier. And then um, I had an orange soda. And some mozzarella string cheese. And it was, it was like a really special day I guess. It was just me and my dad. And that's all I remember. I just remember hanging out with him. And I remember he came around the car. I think he had a blue car or something. So that's my first memory. Now my other memory, my other first memory was, or is, um, my mother and I getting out of bed. She, um, she's, she was single by the, I think that was about 1973. And my mom had divorced my dad or left him. I don't know why at the time. Um, and she was carrying me out to the car. I, I remember smelling her perfume. And she would carry me and put me in the back seat. It was cold outside, so she had a blanket wrapped around me. She took very care, good care of me. I felt really good. I felt safe, you know. And I had my mom. That was, so those are, those are my very first memories of my mom and dad. And I think that at the time, they were, I don't think they were bad people or anything like that. Um, but I didn't get to know my dad because my mom had left him. And... What did she tell me my entire life? That my dad was bad. My dad... Okay, here's what I learned about my dad. I learned that my dad is ugly. And sometimes she would tell me I look like my dad. I learned that my, uh, my dad was... Uh, I learned that he was a shitty businessman. I heard that all he thinks about is sex. Uh, and uh, men are just bad. And so I kind of internalized that. So my, my entire life that I'm, I'm a bad person because I'm a guy. And, like, and, and then I swore. And I, was, I stayed mad at my dad. And I'll tell you. And I did see him after that. But I'll get to that in a minute. But I was being told that men are bad. And listen, my grandmother, your great-grandmother, is divorced. I asked my grandmother why she got divorced. Well, he just wanted me to be a slave and fix him food. Okay, so that's the reason why they're divorced. And I asked my grandpa. Grandpa, why did you and grandma get a divorce? Oh, that bitch. That was all I got. So I just assumed that it was my grandpa's fault because he was remarried to this big fat lady and uh, he had another kid with her. And, and my, um, the, 
then my sisters also would tell me things about my, my dad's brother, my uncle. Said that he was a drug addict. Said that he was, a, he was gay. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So I, I look back now and go, how did she even know these people? Because I've, look, my uncle's still alive. And I tried to, I, I found out a little bit about him uh, through, his, through my dad's sister. Um, so all my life I'm being told that men are bad. You see how that can kind of make you, it made me kind of say, well, I hate my dad. Like, I don't like him. I, like, I was, I was, and plus I'm with my mom. So I'm going to say and agree with whatever she says because I, I don't see why she has a reason to lie. I mean, it must be true, right? So, now listen, I've got two older sisters. Um, one is um, seven years older than me. The other one's five years older than me. So, and they were a lot bigger because girls grow fast and they mature faster. And I've got a younger brother who's five years younger so i'm the middle child so you're a single child or or a you know only child so life is a lot different for you i grew up with my siblings and we fought like crazy and but i was always caught in the middle that's why you know they, uh, middle children have this thing where they want to please the older ones and they got to please the younger ones i'm, I'm never in, i'm never the boss but i'm always the subservient one to both the younger and the older I know this is, it's very hard to explain. I can't fit a lifetime of stories into this little video. I can only tell you my perspective, what I saw growing up through my eyes looking outward. Okay, and th these are not times where I'm self-reflective. I'm not uh, thinking about um, how to be a man in this world. I, I'm not, I don't have any male influence except for my mother remarried this guy named Dan, which is my, because listen, there's four kids. My mother has four kids and three different fathers. So my mother had a boyfriend. She and that's how she had my sister, my older sister. Then she left him immediately, he, and my sister didn't meet him until she was twenty years old or something like that, or older. So then she married my dad. Apparently, then had that a business and had me and my other sister, Lana. Then she had me. No, no, they had a stillborn. And then my mother wanted to, you know wanted to try again, and so then they had me. And then my mother left him after they had a business and all this other stuff, and I'll tell you about that later. Uh, how it went out of business uh, because guilty people always tell on themselves so then um, my my mom married this guy named Dan I don't know it's a whole story behind that but uh, he my brother was born in 1975 my mother left California and moved all we I remember the drive we drove all the way to Florida from California oh my god that that, that was like a nightmare so we're packed in this car and this man is not very nice to me my brother's dad was never nice to me at all. Matter of fact, it took, it's taken me years to even think about that, you know, how abusive he was. Like, it was crazy. Like, I, if, I was a, if, I was a, if I could see him now, I, I would ask him, hey, man, do you think it was okay that what you did, like, to me? Like, he, would, he was pretty fucking mean. It's because I'm not his kid. Stepfathers that step up and they take care of somebody else's kids or whatever, I mean, that's all great. But, you know what, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it's not, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not, it's not a good thing. Um, no one's, no one's going to love you the way your own father and mother will just, that's just a fact. If you go, uh, you know, rescue orphans or whatever, that's great. But just to have some other man take care of your kid. Uh, mm -mm. So you know, like how, how abusive was he? Like, uh, he just hit me in the head. Like he would make me responsible for my brother falling down. Like if we were playing on the stairs, I'm five, I'm seven or something like that. And my brother's two. We fall on the stairs. And my dad comes over and lumps up my head with his fingers. But he poked me so hard several times. He would uh, tease me about being a girl like all the time, constantly. And as soon as no one was around, then he would do really mean shit. One time he dropped a log on my toe, my my log man split my toe. And then when my mom came around the corner, she he was he cussed me out and said it was my fault. Said that I dropped it on my foot. It was clearly him. I remember it very well. I have a great memory. If you if you didn't know that, you probably wouldn't know. That. You you might think I'm just making this up. Um, but if you, if you ask my mother, uh, some things or someone that's older than me, I, I, I remember things, I don't know if they're always accurate. It might be a little one off. Like, uh, when I was in the war, I, I, we had eight kills. I, I thought it was eight kills, but then I looked at my diary and it was seven. I was, I was off by a number. Um, I don't have a perfect memory, but I do have a damn good memory and I know what I did and didn't do. So anyway, he was just, he was just abusive. He just didn't like me cause I'm not his kid. So now, what's the story behind us, my mom leaving, my dad? Well, that was not known to me until 
just a couple years ago, after my dad died. I never spoke to my dad, but after that, but um, not before, after he died, but I didn't speak to my dad ex- since I was five, because my dad did, did come out to Florida to see us. But how my mom got out of California, that's the question. And she just recently admitted to me that she had stolen money from the business that her and my dad owned. They had, they had, a, they had a curtain business and a boat business at Folsom Lake. The first fiberglass boat business up there or something like that, 1970s, maybe or at least 1960s. She's stolen $600. I think that's about $7,000 in today's money. But it helped. My dad was already struggling. He was a new business starting out, and she was stealing money from the... I, and listen, this is just what she admitted to me. I'm sure it's not everything. I'm sure there's more. And it helped drive them out of business. Now, my mother had always told me that my dad was a bad businessman. She was always saying, oh, well, he, he, does, he was always giving customers free things and all this other stuff. She, was, she had been projecting onto him or her issues, trying to make excuses for why she stole. And, and she did make an excuse even when she admitted it to me. And I only caught her because I caught her in so many lies. Um, she only admitted it to me when, um, in a fit of anger when I, when I, when I pressed her. Because I, I keep all these years I ask questions over and over again. Like, why? Why? Because I, I catch her changing her story. My mother is a liar. Just like your mother is, Sean. Not that they're a liar to everything. Not that they lie about everything. They lie to you, Sean. They lie to their kids. Women have to move away from the man that they burned, change, get themselves in a whole new area so that nobody knows them. Then they can tell their version of events, add, subtract, whatever they want to do, and no one's going to question them. See, see how that works? It's so convenient. So what else did she do? She, my mom went to court and said that my dad was molesting my sister or wanted to or something like that or said he had a right some, something crazy that just doesn't make sense it made sense as a kid oh because men, because men are nasty sex mon- monsters right <laughs> right that's how men are portrayed in tv movies we're, we're portrayed as buffoons and sex predators it's ridiculous when have you, when's the last time you ever heard listen sean even your grandfather the story was that he was peeking at his stepdaughter or the oldest sister Snoop. i don't believe the story but i tell you what when i was that your mom's house, your grandmother makes makes my uh, makes your mother and her sisters all put on their bras before daddy comes home off the road when he comes out of the truck. Now, I thought that was weird. I, didn't, I was like, what the fuck? But I didn't question it. I was like, oh, so this is weird. You know, like, this is, what's going on here? So there's, <laughs> I don't know if, it, and they were, listen, that was just something I just happened to overhear. And then your mom kind of told me a little bit about it. But then I don't want to question it after that. So anyway, um, so the court gave my mom, my mom permission to take us out of state. Just go, oh, well, if that's so you got to protect your kids. So she left. So my dad is probably pissed. Comes out to Florida and he takes, and he's, and he's, I remember my dad drove up and I remember happy to see my dad. Like, oh my God, my dad. Right? He comes in. I remember laying on his lap and uh, feeling safe and I just, I just missed him. I just, I remember to him being a good thing. Like I just, I just, it was just a good feeling. And he was supposed to take us to Disney World. I guess they reconciled enough to where, because uh, we're living in a trailer, and my mom's neglectful as, a, as fuck. And she's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I remember just in that little time in Florida, I got attacked by a dog. I got, I stepped on a, a, a metal uh, something, it went into my foot, had to have tetanus shots. I had my tonsils out. It was in, in a, bus, a bus crash where the bus crash from school left the bus in the ditch upside down. That was just in a a year period. And that was a lot for a kid to go through. Like I was like traumatized, like, not traumatized, but you know, like they would. I was getting left out of a lot of stuff. My sisters don't play with me, and I'm I'm in this little trailer park, and I'm trailer trash, <laughs> and I'm learning how to ride a ten speed bike in sand. So and and that's I remember there's good memories to it. So this is just this is just the bumps and bruises of life, right? So. So living in that time, I, I didn't know that I had missed my dad. I wasn't really thinking about my dad. You know, when he showed up, oh my God, my dad. Like I remembered, like it's something that was like there. And he took us to Disney World, me and my sister, uh, the, you know, his two kids. And then he just didn't bring us back. So what my dad did was he went and he took his kids back from the woman that stole the kids in the first place. 
So as far as I'm concerned, my mother was the kidnapper. It didn't seem like that at the time because I'm the victim of this, what my mom is doing. And I'm, but I'm playing no role in it other than I'm just, I'm, the, I'm a package. So I don't, listen, I don't, I'm not saying what my dad did was right because it, it backfired on him. But it, I don't think, it doesn't matter if he, it, even if he did do something right, it would be no kids, his kids were taken. No ifs, ands, or buts. So that's what happened to you, Sean. You were taken from me by your mother on false pretenses. Um, she would mix lies with the truth, and so and and you have no other no other backdrop in which to compare it to. You have no experience. You say you remember uh, the past, but you don't, Sean. You you only you're only seven at the time, and I was the one. I'm not saying I'm an angel, okay? I'm not an angel, and you're and I'm not a demon either. I'm not some kind of Sean, I took care, I did the best I could, but overwhelming forces against me, just like with my dad, my, my mom, women have this power where they can go into court and say anything they want and people believe them. And it didn't help that your grandfather wrote a statement saying that I had called him and told him that no one's ever going to see Sean again. Your dad, your grandfather lied and said this because I had called him because your mom was stealing money. Now, she, see, you, this is the thing where when guilty people tell on themselves. Guilty people will project onto other people what their guilt is. You, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very real thing in psychology. And I can give you several examples. But basically, your dad was accepting money, or your grandfather was accepting money from Sander while we were married. Um, and no one was telling me about it. Now, when you're married to somebody and they start sneaking their money off and giving it to their parents, that's not fair to me. It's not fair to you. And it's wrong. Now, he didn't need the money because he's making payments uh, for your Uncle Junior for, for him to ride around in a BMW. Well, if you're just a truck driver, then you shouldn't be paying for your son's car, BMW, and your other daughter's car, and then your truck. And, you know, that's not fair. And then, and then my family has to send money to him. Because he can't manage his fucking money? You see, Sean? I know this, now, your grandfather's going to deny it or whatever. They're going to say, because listen, when I call him, he denied the whole thing. Um, and I have, pr I can prove it. Now, I can't, well, I had the phone records at the time. But I said, hey, can you guys please stay out of our business? Because your mom, your grandfather and, and grandmother were manipulating and, and enabling Sandra to do bad things. And then giving her a place to fall back to. So she could wreck her marriage and then fall back and go live at home. A healthy family doesn't do that, Sean. Uh, if my son, if you were to, if you were doing bad things to your wife, and then you wanted to just, uh, you know, take the money, well, I'm doing this, this, I'd say stay there and work your, yourself out. Stay there and work out your own problems. I wouldn't go and lie for you in court. That's, that's how you know that they, that's how you know your mom was wrong. When he's got to write a statement in lying in court, Sean, I would never, if I wanted to kidnap you, I could have did it. If I wanted to hurt your mom, I bet you I could hurt her. I'm stronger than her. So how is it that your mother is claiming that I'm abusing her all this time, right? And my mother was claiming the same, you know, like she claimed that my dad is, is a sex pervert. It's, Sean, that's what women do when they when they're when they're bad people. Your mom's not a good person. I don't I know you don't want to hear it. I don't I didn't like finding out that my mom's a shitty person. I don't talk to my mom anymore. She she plays games with me. I've got her, I've got it on film. Uh, I've 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 got a lot on film, actually. I film everything. Every interaction I have with my 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 mom just came out recently, and brought some things to me that uh, it's a whole story. I'll get to it. So I don't want there to be a lot of drama, I, Sean. I I'm trying to tell you that the reason why I'm telling this story is because I don't want you to waste your time hating me. It's a waste of time. You're not hurting me. I'm already hurt. I was already hurt when you left my life. Your mother, that was the cut that cut all... The, you could... I, I'd rather her stab me. So, I've already been hurt, Sean. Believe me. Okay? I tried to take as much responsibility as I could. That wasn't good enough. Um, and I can't... And it was wrong. I, I should have never taken the responsibility that wouldn't mind. I, I, and I should have never called the police when I caught you when your mom... I mean, that's... Listen, Sean, how is it that I called the police twice? It's on record. And then... Third time, I get arrested, and they arrest me for domestic violence, and I'm the one that's injured. That's what good 
calling the police does for anybody. If a, and listen, all the stories in the past used to be women have claimed that their their husband were just punching him or slapping him for no reason. Then you, then you see the the stereotypical wife going to work and she's got big sunglasses on, covering up her black eye. Um, maybe that maybe that has happened in the past. I don't know. I can't say it hasn't happened. But I've never I've never witnessed that. I've never witnessed a woman that would has done that or has had that happen to her. My experience was when my wife began making threats to me, telling me she was going to do something illegal. Well, she, she left open the blank a blank threat. That's what a threat is. I know what it is, but I don't know exactly what it is. I just know it's illegal. What she's going to do? And plus, I just caught her sending like twenty thousand dollars to your to your mom or your grandmother. I keep saying that confusing mom and dad you're and so when I, when I confronted your mom this is how it all started I confronted your mom and said hey where's all this money going and she looked at me and she says get out so if so, if you catch someone stealing money from you and you turn around and and you you think you would think they would go oh, I'm sorry or I, I, and you know and you know like a guilty person right you would expect that and that's and usually honest people and I'm pretty honest, Sean. I, I'm not a, I, I've lied before. Believe me, I, I've I've lied, stolen, I've done crazy stuff, but I don't. I have a line. I have a line in my in my brain that tells me what I'm willing to do. And some of that I had it has been tested because I've been to war, Sean. I've been to Iraq. I've killed people. It doesn't feel good to kill people. So here's the, here's here's the thing. I wouldn't kill for money ever. I will kill in self-defense, and I would. I wish I would have done more to help to defend you, so that your mom didn't take you. But it would have just anything I would have done to your mom. That's why. That's how you know I'm not crazy. I'm not willing to go to jail for you, Sean. I'm not willing to go spend the rest of my life in jail just to to kill your mom or to hurt your mom or something like that. I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't dare hit your mom. I don't hit any women. I just wouldn't dare. Um, in society, and plus, it's just no contest. Why would I do that? And I had a girlfriend after your mom, and she slapped me one time over a phone call because I didn't because I didn't answer my phone because women can be jealous. And I had already invested a little bit of time in this woman until when she did that, almost eleven years. Somebody hits you or puts your hands on you, you you leave. Same and same thing for women. If if if, if a man hits you, leave. But I'll but you can ask why. I got slapped over a phone call. She can't hurt me, but it's still, I was like, oh no, that's that means if someone's hitting you like a child, go. But I don't know. I I, I always wanted to ask why. Now I've never hit your mom. I will. I the reason why I didn't hit your mom is because I'm scared of hitting a woman and then having because I, I already know I've already seen it play out. I'm, but I I'm confused on how bad the justice system is, and the justice system is so bad so bad you don't you have sean you never want to talk to police i'm telling you right now stay away from police so that's that's another part of the story so let me get back to um my dad coming out to, and taking us right so for about three or four months we're on the road with my dad now during that time uh, my dad spanked me one time bad pretty bad okay uh, and it was because i was eating I, I snuck in the food and i took out some raw bacon when we were camping next to this river and i ate the raw bacon now, i didn't do it once i did it twice he, and the second time that's when he whipped me now later on i would say he dragged me through the fire and he beat me real bad and i was hungry that's how I portrayed it to my mom because um, later on because I, I, wouldn't, I wanted my mom to accept me and my family. So I lied about him being over the... That's the only story I told. But here's the real truth. My dad loved me very much. And he spanked me out of love. Because uh, you can get worms eating bacon. Ask anybody. You don't eat raw pork. I could have died if there was something wrong with that pork had been left out in the sun or something like that. I could be dead. Now, years later, I got food poisoning from my mom when she left beans on the stove. And let it let it cool too slowly, which is a common thing that people do. And they get that's how you get food poisoning. So I my mom has food poisoned me. My dad never did. He wanted to prevent that. So anyway, um, my dad also taught me how to drive. I know that sounds crazy, but this is in the 70s. 
And he taught me in a very lovingly, patient way. He just let me sit on his lap and he told me the fundamentals of driving. And he explained to me and he did it very patiently. I know that doesn't sound like it's something you teach a five-year-old, but, I, but the, what, he, what he taught me was are things that I still use now when I'm driving. Isn't that ironic? Also, <laughs> he had a gun underneath his front seat. I didn't know this, but as a kid, uh, he was he, he went inside this place and I got to the gun. Because my dad's not perfect, okay? And it's the 70s. And I got the gun out and I played guns long enough to know which end points where. Well, I had a hair trigger and the gun went off and it shot the car. <laughs> the inside of the door of the car. <clears throat> Everybody comes out. My sister, my dad, and some lady he was talking to, or it might have been a store we were at. And, and I had put it back so fast and my ears were ringing, I couldn't hear. And, and I just said, and they were like, what was that? And I, was, and I pointed off in the distance. I said, it came from over there because I was scared. I was in trouble. I, I knew I did something bad. It turned out I was a little two-shot Derringer, if you, know, if, you know, if you know what that is. So my dad came after all the dust cleared and everyone was like done investigating this loud noise that no one could figure out. And I'm saying it's over there. My dad's staring at me. I can feel him burning, <laughs> burning a, a stare in the back of my neck. And I'm trying to ignore, I'm trying to act natural, but my ears are still ringing. Like they rang for half a day after that. And he's, he knows what's happening, but he's scared too. Cause my dad, you know, listen, grownups don't know everything. And he was, he, listen, my dad probably freaked the fuck out because I never saw that gun again until, well, I, I saw it la later on that day or the next couple of days, but I'm going to tell you what happened. So I'm telling you what, what I would be thinking if I was my dad. Okay, I don't want to... Okay, he's, he's lying pretty good. Like, he's saying he doesn't know, but I know he did something. I don't want to bring it up right now because he's going to look like a bad person leaving a gun out for a kid to get. I mean, you don't, can you imagine if I would have shot myself? Oh, my God. Uh, kids do that nowadays. And they get shot, and, they, of course, the parents didn't have it locked up, so now you got all these rules where, you know, people want, want a gun for protection, but they got to lock it up. It's so stupid. But things happen, right? So he took out the gun, and then he taught me how to use the gun, Sean. And he taught me very patiently... And he should have did that before, and he shouldn't. But listen, he made a mistake. Uh, I know that I should hate him because he left the gun out and he could have killed me. Listen, that's not how people think. People don't think bad. That, listen, that's what I'm saying. Like, you hate me. You think that I want bad for you, but I don't, Sean. I love you. I just, I make mistakes. I, I do things that I think are okay. And then later on, I, I have to, I'm learning too. You see what I'm saying? Just like you're learning. You're, and I don't want you to repeat some of the easier lessons that later on can be very painful. I'm trying to prevent that. I don't want you to hate your mom. I'm not saying this so I can get back at him. I'm just telling you the truth that, um, you know, I don't, I hated my dad my whole life. I, I'd said after that that, well, I didn't really hate him. I was just saying that. But after a while, because you don't, you don't remember if it's your feelings or their feelings. I had to really go back and search my brain and even to even tell you that he taught me something, you know, patiently. I, I have to say that because I don't remember him being frustrated at those times. And I remember when people do bad things to me. I remember. And I remember when they do good things for me. And his bad things that I was saying was bad were protective things, like spanking me over the bacon. The bacon. And, uh, and, and, the, and then he didn't shame me for, you know, because he would have gotten in trouble. If, you, know, if, you know, of course, he doesn't want anyone to know that I shot the gun. But he's got to, what does he do? Is he supposed to go turn himself in and go to jail because he let me get to the gun? He, he made a mistake. Thank God I didn't shoot myself. And he recovered. And then he did the right thing taught me how to use it now i didn't see a gun until later on but i went to war and learned how to use a gun but i just always knew you know like when i'm at the gun range uh, in the army and they say point that thing down range or they're those they have sergeants there that will shoot you if you point that gun anywhere but down range and you got to be careful and they've shot other people by accident so if when dummies go up there and start using guns they don't know how to use them because they never used one before you know i i did pretty good in basic training you know like i I'm saying that my dad might have been part of that, you know, like teaching me how to use a gun. I don't use a gun now. I don't need them. I don't. I can't even have one. But I wouldn't have a gun anyway. I don't like guns. Okay. I don't like. Uh, I don't like killing people. It sucks. In your conscience. And um, so anyway, during that time, my, my dad had me. It was a pretty. It was a big adventure. I had a fun time actually some of the time, except for when my sister began calling the police. Okay, because there was a boy that was like 15, she's 10, and he's trying to move in on her and at this, this place we were camping, and my dad was trying to keep them two apart because the guy kept sneaking in, sneaking off on my sister. Now, um, he couldn't be there all the time, 
but he was but he was work, working and you know he was splitting he wasn't a bum he was t- trying to do odd jobs on the road trying to support us there was a time when i was hungry and we didn't have any money and my dad went in and and he stole groceries for us my dad's my dad's not a robber okay because you can say that people do steal my mom stole from the business you know and did whatever and my dad still but the only time i saw my dad steal was for food my mom she stole because she she made the excuse that us kids needed diapers kids don't need diapers now i know that sounds funny maybe it does sound like a need but if you're starving what do you need pampers or do you need food and if you're living in some place and you don't have pampers and you're struggling in business, you don't go steal money from your business to go buy some, some hoity-toity diapers. Wash them off. Use some toilet paper. Put them in the bathtub. Whatever you got to do. But you don't go steal money from your business. Okay? Um, and my mom also admitted to me that she had been playing head games with my dad. Um, she would agree to, now this back in the 70s, free sex and all this other stuff, where my dad and mom had agreed to have a foursome with another couple. Okay? And his wife's wife. Whatever the thing was. Okay? My mom had said she agreed, and then at the last minute, as, as they made the swap, boom, then, then she said, I couldn't go through with it. This pissed off the guy that they were friends with, and it caused a big disruption, and, they, and those people left. They got into a big argument, because my mom, but yet my mom can run off with another man, my, um, my brother's dad, and lie in court, and, but, she, but she's too, her morals are too high to go sleep with another man when she's married, but she play, see, she plays manipulative games. And these are games that I would have never known about. Has she not? She only told me that to hurt me, I think. But she told me she told me the truth. And then later on, when I tried to get her to tell me again, because I wanted to record it, she wouldn't. She wouldn't admit it. I said, "Mom, so tell me what was that? Are you good?" And I tried to record it, and then she knew what I was doing. And my mom's not stupid, okay? Just like your mom's not stupid. But I, I can't. When people accuse me of things, and I don't have any way of it's my word against a woman's. Sean, your word against a woman is zip. Zero, nada. You are going to be guilty of whatever that girl or woman says. Period. How do I know this? Because it happened to me, Sean. And when I say it, people say, "Oh, but me hates women," or "I'm I'm the liar." Sean, do you think I'm lying to you when I tell you that I have things to tell you? You think that I'm just calling up to just a bad mouth your mom? I don't really, I don't give a shit about your mom anymore. She can be what she can do whatever she wants, but she's hurting you. She's she's already hurt you. She's if you're not listening to me, Sean. If you think this is bullshit, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. I I can. It's only the truth. The truth is not going to change. Your mom lied about everything. So and my mom did too. So I'm trying to tell you, there's a pattern here. And if you don't find out, I didn't get to find out because my mom later on, just this a year after she told me this, my dad died. In Colorado somewhere. I, and I was looking for him. I was trying to find him. And when she told me that, she said it with a smirk on her face. She uh, Just a slight smirk. It was, it, it was there and gone in an instant. But she took a little bit of pleasure in telling me that my dad was gone. And she told me so bluntly. And uh, we were going. I was going to get my car insurance. And when she came up behind me, she goes, oh, i got to tell you something. And I turned around and she goes, your dad's dead. And when she said the word dead, her that little smirk came on her face. And then she went away real fast. But I recognized that she took a little bit of pleasure in telling me that and I almost when she told me that I almost felt sick and I coughed and laughed and cried and all in one little like some kind of emotion came out of me that was so intense that I don't I don't know I don't know what it was I, I, I mean it was so instant and I don't know how to explain it and I know this sounds like it sounds like crazy talk whatever Sean I don't know what to tell you I'm supposed to be telling you the story about uh, me, you know, getting taken by my dad and my mom playing tug of war with us kids. 